Hello friends, welcome to MATLAB School. In this video, we are going to simulate the field-oriented control of PMSM um, with dynamic de uh, decoupling concepts. Let us get into the simulation part. <coughs> In this simulation, as I told you earlier, we are going to uh, employ field-oriented control with dynamic decoupling. Uh, I tell you uh, what is dynamic decoupling. Uh, before that, I would like to give you a small introduction about uh, what are the things we have here. Uh, this is the battery, and here we have the uh, six switch inverter. Okay, we have the inverter here, uh, and this is the one which is responsible for producing the. Uh, PWM pulses <coughs> okay and here we are measuring the speed and current uh, from the measurement block the speed will be compared with the reference speed here uh, here the command speed is uh, 1500 rpm so at the outer loop we have uh, the speed controller so we are comparing the actual speed with the command speed or the reference speed the actual speed will be in terms of radians per second so that has to be uh, converted to rpm okay so all these variables are uh, given in the initialization uh, command okay so uh, these are the different values of the motor parameters also uh, the gain values uh, P, uh, kp and ka are given here uh, number of pole pairs is four so total number of poles would be eight okay <coughs> so the speed of um, motor is compared with the actual speed the output of the comparator would be the error that error is given as input to this uh, P controller so uh, this forms the outer loop and here we have the inner loop uh, in one of the previous videos I have uh, uh, mentioned to you about the FOC of PMSM without this decoupling okay so the problem with having the uh, system without decoupling is uh, we cannot have a better performance uh, in terms of speed response at higher speeds for lower speeds, it's okay uh, with a system without decoupling. But if you want to run the motor um, above, uh, for example, 1000 RPM, we need to uh, go uh, go with some kind of decoupling. Okay. Uh, before that, I'll tell you what a decoupling is. Uh, if you take a DC motor, we'll be controlling the torque of the DC motor and the speed of the DC motor uh, separately. We have the provision if you vary the armature voltage we can control the torque and if you vary the field uh, current we can vary the speed of the machine so like this we are going to uh, uh, we are trying to do the same in pmsm as well but in pmsm we cannot have control over the field current because uh, we have uh, permanent magnets at the field side so uh, at the uh, we need to decouple the a current which is meant to be uh, given to the uh, fields of the PMSM uh, and we need to make it to zero okay so that's the first step in making the uh, decoupling so uh, <coughs> we are uh, converting the actual three phase currents to uh, DQ reference okay so there will be three uh, Three phase currents IA, IB, and IC, uh, which has to be converted to D axis current and Q axis current, direct, direct axis current and quadrature axis current. But before converting the uh, converting the currents to DQ, we need to go for another one conversion called alpha beta. There we will be converting the three phase currents to two phase AC currents again this alpha beta will be converted to uh, d and q 
uh, here from the motor itself we can directly get the currents d and q okay so we are not uh, proceeding with the conversion uh, otherwise if you want to convert three phase currents ia ib and ic uh, we need to deploy parse transformation parse transformation and collapse transformation since we are getting the d axis and q axis current directly uh, we are just comparing it with the uh, reference values okay so the output of the outer loop uh, becomes the reference iq reference quadrature axis current and as i told you earlier we are giving zero id current okay direct axis current uh, I mean the reference uh, direct axis current will be zero. The reason is we are giving, uh, I mean we don't have any uh, field winding at the rotor side of PMSM. So that is uh, the primary uh, stage of uh, uh, going with decoupling. But this uh, this alone will not protect the system or it will not, uh, uh, I mean only with the introduction of ID S0 uh, we cannot have a complete decoupling of uh, field okay so at higher speed especially at higher speeds so for that reason we need to uh, include the dynamics of um, iq current at id okay what i'm trying to uh, tell you is the variation in iq will have some effect on the uh, variation I mean, effect on the id current okay so this is the direct axis current so this will have some effect on the output voltage uh, produced by this controller okay so we'll be uh, trying to decouple this uh, from this okay so for that reason we are just subtracting the uh, values of uh, uh, this current from here okay so this part is the dynamic decoupling part okay right uh, so here we have the id reference and this the, this is the feedback id current so this id current is subtracted from the reference current the output will be the error the id currents error is given as input to this pa controller and at the other side we have uh, iq reference coming from the outer loop this will be compared with the uh, reference iq and here we have the error this error is given as input to the PA controller we have here. Okay, so one of the inputs uh, to the output of this PA controller will be the one from dynamic decoupling. Okay, so what we are doing here is we are just uh, bringing the effect of ID on IQ okay iq voltage so this variation iq currents variation will be reflected in uh, vq okay quadrature axis voltage similarly the variations um, in id will be i mean iq will be reflected in vd So, wrongly click that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the output of 
this current controller will be given as input to the inverse path transform uh, see in inverse path transform as i told earlier uh, it will be converted to dq frame will be converted to alpha beta so alpha beta uh, will be two sine waves so basically we are converting two dc signals to two sine waves okay and here we have inverse class transform so in inverse class transform we will be converting the three phase i mean two phase uh, currents to three phase okay alpha beta will be converted to abc and the output of this is given as input to the uh, pwm generator so here we have the sine pwm generator uh, output of this will be given as input to this subsystem okay here we have the inverter okay so let us uh, run the model Okay. Let me open the model again. Okay. Let us run the model now. The given torque uh, input is 10 newton meter. Okay. The simulation has started to run. Yes. The given reference speed is 1500 rpm, so it is trying to settle at 1500 rpm. Eventually, there is a slight overshoot. So, in the process of settling, uh, the overshoots and undershoots are uh, obvious. So, uh, it will take a while for the system to settle exactly at the command speed. So it is uh, running. Let us see uh, the other parameters. Okay, this is the target. And these are the three phase currents IA, IB, and IC. <laughs> the battery here uses the lithium ion battery. The nominal voltage of the battery is 400 volts. Uh, rated capacity of the battery is 50 h initial soc is 50 so you can uh, change these values as well okay now, as you can see it is settling exactly at 1500 rpm so this line is 1400 this is 1600 rpm so it is settling uh, in the middle of uh, these two lines, so it is settling exactly at 1500 rpm. Okay, uh, 
So these are array transition blocks, which will uh, limit the uh, rate of transfer of data from uh, this end to the this end. So this model is available for uh, download uh, from the link in the description. Uh, if you want, you can uh, download this and you can uh, use it for your purpose. Okay. So thanks for watching the video.